Hey, good day, you guys. <laughs> You're catching me here in the middle of our garden project. Uh, this started a couple of weeks ago already. I will um, uh, link the video in the description. We turned this uh, flower bed into a, a raised bed for a garden. And uh, yeah, May wasn't great um, for starting a garden. I mean, uh, the weather was pretty nice, uh, lots of rain. So it was too wet to start a garden, and but now we have to. So welcome to No Risk No Farm. My name is Leo Risk and uh, you see me here uh, at my least favorite task um, when it comes to gardening. Weeding. I don't want to say the word hate because it's, I think, a pretty hard word, but I don't like it. Uh, please put in the comments below what is your uh, favorite and least favorite task when it comes to gardening. I would like to see that. So I started today in the morning uh, because the weeds were taking over already again. But I didn't want to till it because it's too wet. And so the, the tiller would be kind of uh, a mess. Yeah, and this is all the weeds here that I pulled out of the garden bed and um, yeah, now I'm uh, kind of raking it together and then we will bring it over uh, to the chicks. Okay, let's finish this and then uh, continue. All these weeds, they drive me nuts. I don't like them. And um, found a pretty decent solution that uh, reduces uh, the work with weeds a little bit. We'll show it later to you. Um, yeah, at least, I think, 80%... Um, it's 80% less work uh, if you put it in. So... Okay, let's go and bring this um, cart to to the chicks and I'll show you um, yeah show you the chicks we call this uh, chicken tractor our KFC chicken tractor um, we decided to keep it stationary because um, it's too heavy it turned out to be too heavy I think uh, the whole roof construction is too massive and uh, I mean I can pull it the thing is uh, the chickens uh, are usually in the back when I start to pull it they're in the back and then um, there is a chance that I actually drive over it or pull pull it over over them and um, uh, actually it happened already that I injured one and um, yeah it's too bad so that's why we decided to keep it on one spot and just feed them grass instead and bring it to them, basically. Woo! <laughs> I guess I scared them. This is our oldest group, uh, 2024. And um, it's a mixed flock. So basically we have here our barnyard mix of chicks. And uh, we also have the, the pure um, black copper marans here. In order to to tell them apart, we have uh, marked them with uh, some uh, leg bands so that we know what breed is what. Lots of weeds. 
They seem to be happy now and uh, let's go get back to the garden. The next step is to smooth everything out and have it nice and nice and clean. There are some spots that are a bit lower, so I'll try to bring it all on one level. Some old nails, wow, big ones. Now that the garden bed is nice and smooth, I would like to show you our solution to avoid weeds in the garden. It's the woven weed fabric. Uh, like the name suggests, it's not a foil, but it's actually um, woven together very tight. And um, the idea is to block the weeds growing through it. Uh, but it allows moisture like uh, rain or even if you you're watering the garden moisture to to get through it and uh, watering the plants so uh, the idea is to have it over the whole bed and then um, having holes here to place the plants into it this reduces the amount of weeds that we can uh, I mean, we can press down on weeds basically and uh, they might come through the holes if the holes are a little bit too big or so. But uh, as I said before, it reduces the amount of weeding um, to about 80% or maybe even more. So let's uh, yeah, get into it. But before we do that, um, before we install that, there are... Um, these staples are used to hold the, the weed fabric down basically on the ground and um, preferably the ground should be firm to, uh, to allow them to grab into it and actually hold it. If the ground is loose they might I mean not hold it as tight so that's why I brought this little tool here I will go and um, um, go around the perimeter of the uh, garden bed and uh, tap it down a little bit and make it a little bit more firm. And then we start installing uh, the fabric. Now that the weed fabric is rolled out, uh, I need to cut it, or I would like to say burn it. In the past I did a mistake that I actually cut it with my scissors and see what it does. Oh, the wind is taking the fabric right now, which is okay. Um, yeah, it's all loose and um, yeah, we can do it better. With, uh, with a burner. Um, I tried multiple burners, you guys, and uh, most of them suck. I will just show you a couple of them. And um, yeah, just, they, they, they just don't work. I mean, this is a small one. Uh, it worked, I think, for very um, nice days where there's no wind at all then it worked somewhat, but it wasn't a good solution. Then I started to buy uh, these um, types. This is a very simple one that needs an actual lighter to light it. Um, not, a, not good at all. So as, as soon as a little wind is there, it's, it just turns off. 
This is a little bit advanced. It has its own um, kind of ignition here, but uh, I have a hard time to turn it on oftentimes. So same here, it doesn't work well in the wind. So, and I tried even with uh, this type of gas, it's propane here. Uh, it's these solution, uh, solutions, they suck, they are not good. So I did some research and I ended up uh, buying this one. It's um, used on different type, uh, types of um, fuel, uh, gas here, it's butane. And it, um, it's usually used with uh, uh, camping stoves and stuff. It has this little notch here on the top. So this burner is actually pretty nice so far. I <clears throat> tried it a little bit. So um, it didn't burn the, uh, the fabric yet, but um, I ended up buying two, two of them because I'm scared that they might also fail. But so far, I think uh, the, uh, this might be the best solution, but we will see. Okay, this is what we are using today to cut uh, the fabric. Let's get to it. Nice. I like it. It seals the end of the foil nicely, so it will not come loose and uh, yeah, be, oh, it's hot. <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice and firm on the end. This is what I like. All right, and uh, now I will try to install the fabric here on top of the garden bed. I might uh, have to cut off a portion of it as soon as everything is installed. I think I will first staple the first corner here so that it stays in place when I'm pull, pulling on the other side. Give it a little bit of a overlap here. I actually like it uh, when these staples get a little bit rusty and they grab better in the ground. So the very new ones, they are kind of too smooth and uh, they come out pretty easily. Okay, so the first row is done. Now the wind makes it a little bit more challenging, but I think it's all right. We can manage it here. Okay. Yeah, I will just put some staples in for now. But then actually go uh, along the wall and put in the staples here. Um, so that's all nice and straight.
Okay, now I installed the two long pieces and a little uh, piece is open yet. So I thought to cut off the remains here and then um, I use that uh, for the little patch over there. I'm pretty impressed with this new burner, you guys. I mean, it did a great job and there's, it's really a game changer compared to the other ones. Nice straight line here and um, the seals are good. So yeah, absolutely um, a good burner, no question. So now I will install two little pieces over there and then uh, we are done with the first step here uh, on this garden patch. Yeah, whenever you have two uh, of these foils, uh, make sure there is enough overlap so that the wind uh, is not yeah, blowing in some seeds and stuff. And if there is actually wheat coming up, or weeds close by in, in this area that they don't they get too much sunlight. Now everything is nicely covered and for the next step uh, we will need um, at least two of my tools here. First of all, it is this jig I made uh, I think two years back. Um, this jig allows me to quickly measure the distance between the plants and um, I have different sizes here, used just uh, normal cans here and uh, screwed them on a certain distance here to this board and um, let's say for tomatoes we use the big one here and for several other plants you need a smaller hole and uh, the hole is burned into this uh, fabric here um, because my experience with the last couple torches was horrible I burned the holes uh, with the heat gun here and um, now that I tested this torch it might be actually better uh, be better than the heat gun but uh, let's see and compare um, which one does a better job and continue with uh, that tool then okay first um, so the, lay uh, the layout is um, the first plant will be a zucchini and then we will continue with eight tomatoes and then the uh, the last plant in the row will also be a zucchini um, they will be all planted in the same distance um, it's about two feet from uh, from here so the distance between the plants will be two feet basically okay let's do the first hole and then see how it goes So this uh, little um, bar here helps me to stay in between those lines, center. Um, that's why I added it to the jig here. Okay, the first hole I will do with uh, the heat gun and see how it uh, works.
okay there is a hole so it took a couple seconds and um, now let's see how the result is uh, with the torch so the tomatoes we will will plant on the second line here so that we have a little bit more space in the front for for a smaller plant yet okay i will go 60 or um, put this uh, here on the center and then uh, stay on the line here okay like this Wow, that's what that was quick. So, and the winner is the torch. So, I'll continue with the torch. This one uh, is not needed today. You guys, this went so fast, I did one hole more than needed. Nine instead of eight. So I guess we will have to plant one tomato more. Uh, I don't mind. Just in case, uh, I will put uh, two staples around the holes here, that the wind uh, doesn't yeah, lift up the foil. Uh, it helps it. Keep it nice and straight here. Now we need to make the holes for the plants and therefore we will be using this tool. I bought this set of uh, drills, um, I think two years ago. Um, they come as a set of three for different sizes and um, yeah in this case i will use the biggest one and drill a nice deep hole for um, the zucchinis and the tomatoes Yeah, after that I have to clean up everything nicely. This garden drill make, makes life uh, a lot easier, especially for this type of work. Um, and it's actually nice that the ground is um, a little bit moist, so it sticks to it. I could pull it out and um, yeah, it was good. Okay, let's uh, bring in the plants and um, uh, yeah, just put them inside each hole and then start planting. Here are the two zucchinis. One, uh, one goes here, and one goes here. Yeah, the reason why we decided to make a smaller garden this year is, um, I mean, if you didn't watch the previous videos, um, it's because my wife uh, isn't doing very well. Uh, had some health issues in the beginning of the year and is still recovering. So, and... Uh, that's why we decided to downsize this year and put the garden closer to the house and uh, have it way smaller than we used to have. And uh, yeah, now I'm actually helping to setting everything up. Uh, I will leave the rest of the plants uh, up to her and she will do it um, yeah, based on her um, pace, I guess. And uh, 
but this uh, plants tomatoes and zucchinis they are ready to be put in in ground so that's why i'm jumping in here and doing it this is our little greenhouse for this year and um, yeah we'll see how the planting goes let me quickly show you our secret uh, ingredients that we use first of all it is uh, eggshells and uh, the next ingredient is rabbit manure right from the source uh, some of the bigger rabbits they um, have a pretty <laughs> designated spot in their cage where they have their bathroom so it's pretty easy to harvest <laughs> harvest the manure from them so we collect it over a certain period of time and then we have it for planting season uh, we put in in the hole one uh, one scoop of of that and uh, yeah, a handful of um, uh, of the eggshells and that helps the plants to actually grow faster and stronger ah, we have enough can put in a little bit more I guess the hole is a little bit too big here, too deep. Okay, this is good. Press it down nicely. It has good contact here. After we're done with planting, I will give them a nice little drink and then they will, will be good, I guess. Okay, this is the first one. All right, now that the plants are in, I will quickly clean everything, but uh, I will do that off camera. I don't want to waste your time. And um, after that, I will give them a nice little drink. And uh, yeah, we will hope that they will actually start growing. Um, eventually, we will put up a trellis system later to support them and uh, yeah we will update you guys on this uh, in future videos i appreciate that you joined us today when we planted these uh, tomatoes here and zucchinis um, thanks for your time and uh, if you like content like this don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, come along and on our journey here on uh, our farm um, yeah i hope to see you next time god bless